at least at your pay level. Or if you know that for some reason you might be retiring and you decide you want to either hang around or you want to notify them so that it, they can at least let them know that, okay, we can start moving people around. So there's a little planning in the process. So if we at least let the administration know that, yes, we agree that 2.6 of 10.6 should be cut, that we at least they can start looking now instead of in January, February when they normally would be looking. And they can give the new superintendent a little jump on it so they can come in and say, okay, looking at these, but maybe the board thinks that we need to do something different so they can do that because that's what these talks are for. But at least with the with doing the resolution, we'll at least be able to let the public know that we are looking at it and through these talks, you know, we can just continue to be proactive and try to make sure that our district isn't totally screwed up by the legislature. Right? It also helps our legislature show that we're also being proactive trying to figure out where we can make the cuts. Let me throw out a couple things. I'm done. Let me remind you, board members, we brought the information where we compared ourselves to similar districts where we were long. <coughs> Remember, there was about $16 million of that money was directly related to instruction. So you're going to have to understand that you're not going to be able to get there if the number, if, if, if it goes the way that it may go, the problem is that you get into, if you don't make some action now, the next go around, you may have to declare a reduction in force and begin to lay people off. The approach that we're trying to take is trying to save as many jobs as we can in front of the bottom falling out. Now, another option that you have, you know, if you don't want to do anything, if you just want to spend fund balance and not get any kind of salary increase next year, then you can reduce that amount that you reduced this year in terms of the, Alan, we said, I think, what did we say, a salary increase, 1.18%? Four million? Four million. Four million. Four million. So the board it was a little over four million for every employee in the district. So if you, you get that four million out of that, and then you just take the rest of it out of fund balance, and you can you can wait here. But the problem isn't on this front end. You see this where you got them. It's when that fund balance begins to just disappear so rapidly, and now you're looking at if they come at you and they say, okay, on top of this amount of money, you got to give up another twenty million or another twenty-five million. I just don't know that it's prudent not to take some action on the front end of this as opposed to create this hole that nobody can take themselves out of. I think part of it uh, is how, how the logistics of how this is going to happen. This is, you will not see all this movement in January. We won't get the full scope of vacancies and placements until we get through the spring. Normally, we try to have everybody force that it has to move around before spring break. I don't see that happening this year. Number one, because we'll have our new superintendent come in, but our goal is to logistically have this planned out and a scope of work that would have to be done when we get our new administration in and we have another set, a fresh set of eyeballs looking at it. They've heard from the board, they've listened to us, they've listened to the financial people in our district. And then the superintendent is going to have to make a final decision. Our goal is to, to get direction from you to allow us to go forward in the plan. Our goal is not to start placing people in position. We're, when a vacancy comes open, teaching positions, we're not filling it for next school year until we get well into the spring and see certification of all these people and how they're going to match up. So don't think that we're going to start in January placing people because we will not have all, all the resignations, all the retirements, all the <coughs> logistical fees. We won't even have a baby. So my goal is, my staff's goal <coughs> is to have a big spreadsheet all the vacancies and certifications on one side, all the people be placed at the top of their certification and find where the exits and the O's match. That piece will stay in place until the new superintendent comes in and blesses it. We're not going to do anything for this And that's assuming that you choose a superintendent and we have them this spring because we will have to make that decision before the end of June at the absolute latest. What is it, 45 days before the first day, sometime end of June, beginning of July? That's our absolute drop dead date for those decisions. I know we've kind of strayed off, but and I also know we need to stay on task. 
Julie, did you want to go through, share the rest of these questions? Yeah, I, just as far as direction for me, I would um, be a part of this statement. I'm incredibly concerned about when I look at the list of possible new direction uh, for next year, how much we're touching instruction. I know how hard the teachers and the administration have worked to accomplish our recognized status in the district and our low dropout rate. And to pull the slip, we can start touching a lot of the things on on this list. And I would hope that we could think really hard and get a little bit more creative as to how we can try even harder not to touch the Kansas system. Because those teachers work so, so hard and do a lot of extra for no sergeant whatsoever. And um, work many hours if they're not doing So, um, happy my direction. Well, getting back to the questions that you asked, I think we've covered all of Number three, a <coughs> mistake on my part and my response to you. Uh, that safety coordinator is coming out of Mr. Buff's area and that is the retirement. That was not... Okay, it's not crossing guards. It's Cross not crossing guards them. and it's not the safe and drug-free yeah. school yeah. positions yeah. that I said. So we pay half of the crossing guards to pay yeah. the city pay your... Do we? No. No, sir. No, no ma'am. The police department pays for all of the crossing all guards. Okay. We pay half of their budget. <laughs> okay. So, like, for instance, I know we're campus, um, but I there's two crossing guards on residential streets mm -hmm. that are sitting right next to those are paid for by the yeah. city? Yes, yeah, those are, they work for the They're not out on the We are not paid for any crossing guards in the entire district. Okay. But the question you asked, I <coughs> responded incorrectly. I, I thought you were talking about the safe and drug free schools. You're not. You're talking about the person that reports to Mr. Buck that is retiring. And he is dispersing those responsibilities. There has nothing to do with safety of children before and after school. So it's a different function. And then I have another question about the stipend. Are those included? Yes, the I'll, get, right. Are I'll, they included I'll get to those in yeah, just a moment. Okay. Um, you asked number four, and this gets back to the heart of what you and Ms. Latham were talking about. Why are most of the instructional reductions in 11, 12, and administrative reductions in 12 and 13? The um, instructional positions like uh, Penny's instructional specialists that help on the campus, they all carry teacher contracts. So it's very easy to take someone on a teacher contract and place them back into the classroom. Teacher contract to teacher contract, position to position. When you have an administrator contract, you can only place someone that has an administrator contract in a comparable professional position by which the contract that they hold, which would be another administrative position. So you can't take administrators legally and put them back in the classroom. So some of the positions that you were seeing on 2012-13 are due to attrition, resigning, whatever. On number five, you said, are there any supplemental funds that are held as set aside extras out there that we can redirect to these cuts? kind of like backup funds that are budgeted just in case we go over. And um, the only backup funds we have that I'm aware of are is our general fund balance. So, so we have set the extra money over well, the budget. Just that is not correct. We have something. What we do do is we put money in some accounts to cover all these extra things that qualify that we don't have during the year, for example, when when the volleyball teams advance to the state, we have to have money set aside for that. When the band goes places, you know, we have to have set money set aside. So there is some money set aside to cover those types of deals that we know are going to occur. We just don't know where they're going to occur, what campus, what budget to put it in. So Teresa has an account set up for that. I don't know how much is in there to you. For travel, it's about 200000 200000 so is that what you said? Yes. Is that a travel? Budget just for travel, or is it just a general? Travel, fees, and whatever is associated with those types of deals. So we're only like over budgeting about two hundred. Just a small amount. Is that right? <coughs> and then number six, 